What's up, gamers? Hello there, everyone. My name's SCP Explained. A lot of SCP fans have played the free survival horror game SCP Containment Breach. The game story places the player in the shoes of a D-Class at one of the Foundation's containment sites, as they try their best to survive a massive, catastrophic containment breach. Many players, including some of our viewers, feel as if the simulated experience has given them the tools they would need to survive a real-life containment breach. But can playing a video game really be sufficient training for encountering some of the deadliest SCPs in containment and escaping with your life? In order to answer this question, we're going to speculate based on one of the game's most prolific players, famous YouTuber and gamer Markiplier. If playing this game counts as training, then Markiplier has enough hours logged to be a bona fide expert in facing off against the many dangerous anomalies at the SCP Foundation. So kick back, crack open some G Fuel, and let's see if Markiplier lives to game another day. To set the scene, let's all imagine that somehow, through a hiccup in time and space, or by some sort of wish on a cursed monkey's paw, Markiplier found himself inside of an SCP Foundation containment site. That would be bad enough. But the blaring alarms and sounds of chaos signal that he arrived at the worst possible time during a containment breach. The security systems are down, the cells are open, and danger lurks around every corner. Armed with nothing but his wits and winning personality, the only thing he can do is try to navigate the facility as carefully as possible, remember everything he's learned from his time streaming the video game version of this place, and hope he can escape with his life. Let's start with one we know he'd be well equipped to face, SCP-173. The next snapping sculpture is the main antagonist of SCP Containment Breach, so Markiplier would be familiar with the necessary precautions to avoid winding up as its next victim. If he happened to walk into a room and spot the figure, frozen in his gaze, he would know to keep his eyes on the sculpture no matter what, and slowly back out of the room without blinking. Plus, with all of the time he spends looking at screens, he's definitely used to keeping his eyes on one thing for a long period of time. Congratulations, Mark. You survived that one. He's managed to get away from SCP-173 with his neck still intact. Hooray! But as he sneaks through the hall trying not to draw any unwanted attention, a French-accented voice breaks the silence behind him. Good evening, my fine fellow. Are you feeling quite well? There behind him is SCP-049, the Plague Doctor, in all of his beak-masked, black-robed glory. You look feverish. Please, allow me to administer some simple tests. In this scenario, Mark would have to think fast and use some of that patented Markiplier charm to get himself out of a potentially sticky situation before one of those gloved hands can touch him. He would need to politely excuse himself, insist that he just saw his doctor earlier that day, and then, before the Plague Doctor can take another step closer, run as fast as he possibly could in the opposite direction. As Markiplier stops to catch his breath, having thrown the Plague Doctor off of his trail, the sound of sobbing in the corner signals that he might have just escaped the proverbial frying pan, only to wind up in the fire. A quick cursory glance up, and the sight of a long-limbed, pale humanoid form would confirm his suspicions. Yes, yes indeed. He's found himself alone with SCP-096, the Shy Guy. Remembering the details of this particular anomaly from the game, he would look back down at the ground immediately, making sure not to glimpse the creature's face. As long as he avoided looking at its face, it would stay in the corner of the room, scarcely even acknowledging him. Then he would be free to make a mad dash for the exit. All the while, SCP-096 would stay hunched over, crying and completely aware it was briefly in the presence of a beloved YouTube personality. Things might be going pretty well for Markiplier so far, but uh oh, what's that sound? The slither of tentacles on tile, the thumping of a large heart, and the murmuring voice of an elderly Englishman? Poor Markiplier. Video games definitely wouldn't have prepared him for the arrival of SCP-058, the heart of darkness. It's come out of its cage, and it's doing just fine. But the same can't be said for any living thing that this creepy, animate, and highly hostile creature encounters. Endless suffering is the woe of ignorant men who never lack to see the depth of their own hearts and only see the wealth of a poor world suffering of silver and brutal gladness, the heart whispers as it scuttles towards the hapless YouTuber. Without much prior knowledge of the anomaly, 
Mark would be thoroughly unprepared for any encounter with it. He would likely fall victim to its spiked tentacles or the sharp stinger and any attempt to physically fight it off would be ineffective due to the anomaly's resilience to physical attacks. We don't need to get into the details of how that specifically might end. It would be a bit tasteless. But there are friendly anomalies that Markiplier might stumble upon too. Suppose, instead of suffering an untimely end at the tentacles of a heart monster that speaks in creepy, atmospheric gibberish, he found himself face to face with SCP-073, Kane. It would be a nice reprieve, to be sure, as Kane is generally pleasant and congenial to any humans he meets. You never know, he might even be a fan of Mark's work. The same can't be said for Kane's counterpart, SCP-076, however. It's nothing personal, Abel feels murderous rage towards any and all human beings, but it's hard not to take it personally when you see Abel running at you at full speed, brandishing a massive sword that's poised to take your head off with one swing. If Markiplier faced Abel on his own, he would unfortunately not stand much of a chance. Again, it's nothing personal, he's a super powerful ancient warrior with a taste for bloodshed. If Kane was in the vicinity, however, then he might just be able to escape unscathed. Kane is one of the few anomalies that can easily oppose Abel, as any damage Abel manages to do to him will only affect Abel. So the best case scenario for Mark would be to let the two immortals go at it while he sneaks away quietly. After all the stress of navigating the containment site, Markiplier would probably really need some cheering up. After all, his entire sense of reality is crumbling around him at a rapid pace. Good news, because SCP-999 can always sense when someone nearby needs that frown turned upside down. The Tickle Monster doesn't appear in the Containment Breach game, so Mark might not know what to expect when he sees a large mass of bright orange slime oozing toward him at a rapid pace. But once SCP-999 wrapped him in a big hug and its natural mood-boosting properties kicked in, he would know that this particular creature is friend, not foe. He would give the slimy visitor some affectionate pats, and the Tickle Monster would coo happily in return. SCP-999 might try to follow Markiplier down the hall, but he would insist it stay where it is needed, helping the various humans and anomalies of the Foundation when they need a little bit of sweetness and light in their lives. Then the two would part ways, each with their spirits lifted, and with fond memories of their new friend that would last a lifetime. But you can never let your guard down at the SCP Foundation, not even for a second as you're enjoying a hug from everyone's favorite happy slime creature. If you relax and forget to keep your wits about you, you might not notice the wall behind you starting to warp and melt as something horrible reaches through it from a dark place outside space and time. If Markiplier turned around to find himself face to face with the cold dead eyes of SCP-106, the old man, what would happen next? The rotten old man appears in Containment Breach, so Mark would know exactly how bad things can get if this ominous octogenarian gets his decaying hands on him. He would also know that doors, walls, and other solid objects are not enough to deter this entity once he sets his sights on taking you. It is possible that Mark could run, could stay out of the old man's sight until the creature gets bored or finds some other more convenient prey to snatch up. But it's more than likely that SCP-106 would be excited by the chase and would delight in the fear and pain that he is causing. Unlike in Containment Breach, where SCP-106's movements can be predicted, the real thing is far more crafty and malicious. And there's no starting over if the old man catches up to you in the real world. Unfortunately, Markiplier would likely find himself pulled through the wall and into the entity's lair, where only Doom would be waiting. How might Markiplier fare against another prominent character in Containment Breach, though? Say, one very tricky, possessive mask. Thankfully, his experience with the game would have taught Mark in advance that SCP-035 cannot be trusted under any circumstances. However, the mask in the game is at least a little bit helpful, offering valuable information about navigating the containment site, and even providing insight into other threats to the player's safety. The real thing is nowhere near as generous. It has no desire to help humans or anyone but itself, really. If it wound up in the same room as Markiplier, it would only have one goal and one goal only. Get him to take it out of its case and put it over his face. Hopefully Markiplier would know better than to wear the wicked porcelain mask, but its psychic influence is strong. We couldn't blame him if he wound up succumbing to it, putting it on and becoming the mask's newest human host. 
it would be thrilled to have found such a famous body to take over too, who would pilot Markiplier out of the containment site, take him back home, and become the first SCP with over 1 million YouTube subscribers. Aside from this channel, of course. I shudder to think what SCP-035 would do with such a massive platform. It definitely wouldn't be anything good. Now, there aren't just anomalies at the Foundation. There are lots of staff members working to keep the well-oiled machine running smoothly. Of course, some are better at this than others, and some staff are just agents of chaos all on their own. But that makes life more fun. Imagine a team-up between the most fun-loving, memeable researcher at the SCP Foundation and Markiplier. That's right, Dr. Jack Bright himself. Now, many people don't know this, but Dr. Bright is a big fan of gaming YouTubers and has wanted to start a channel of his own for quite some time. The Foundation won't allow him to run any of his own social media, concerned about the potential for secure information leaking to the public, but a chance encounter with one of his favorite YouTube creators would be just the kind of opportunity Dr. Bright has been waiting for. Sure, Markiplier might be caught a bit off guard by a strange man in an amulet asking him to collab, but Dr. Bright's big personality, sense of humor, and high energy would make him a great guest to have on the channel. At least until he finds something else to distract him from his own existential dread and abandons his streaming dreams for that. He'd definitely get Markiplier to autograph the amulet first, though, that's for sure. Lots of people love Markiplier. He's a congenial guy with a passion for making enjoyable content, but there's one anomaly at the Foundation that wouldn't like him at all. In fact, it would find him, frankly, disgusting. But that's not his fault. SCP-682 hates all living things. That's kind of its whole deal. Well, that and being impossible to kill. The massive rage-filled reptile is incredibly dangerous to anything and anyone it encounters, and sadly, Markiplier would be no exception. This creature doesn't care about likability or how much a person has contributed to contemporary internet culture. It only cares about destruction, about snapping the poor YouTuber up in its jaws or knocking him into the wall with one swash of its enormous tail. Unless Markiplier happened to have a spare nuclear warhead on him, it's not likely that he would make it out of meeting with SCP-682 in one piece. Oh, no, not his head. Wait, is that the bite of 87? Sorry, I had to do it for the meme. Speaking of 87, however, how would Markiplier fare if he stumbled upon SCP-087, the stairwell? It's not the likeliest of events, seeing as the doorway leading to it is constructed of reinforced steel with an electro-release lock and is disguised as the entrance to a janitor's closet in an undisclosed building, but in this world, stranger things have happened. Markiplier has played more than enough horror games to know that finding yourself in a dark staircase that seems to go on forever where you can hear the distant cries of a distressed child isn't something anyone would ever want. He could try and descend the staircase, looking for a way out, but if he did, all that would await him is creeping dread and paranoia, and an encounter with the frightening face of SCP-087-1. His best hope in this scenario would be to take a seat at the top of the stairs and wait for his loyal fanbase to notice he hasn't been online for a while. The internet is a powerful thing, and it's possible they could track him down and rescue him before things got too dire. Otherwise, well, best not to think about that. Over the span of their careers, many online personalities and digital content creators have found themselves in need of a rebrand. Maybe they decide to make a new type of creative work. Maybe they wind up at the center of a scandal. Or maybe they just got bored of doing the same thing over and over again. If Markiplier ever decided to change things up, there are dozens of ways he could go about it. But there's one that he would need to visit the SCP Foundation for. It wouldn't be necessarily advisable, but what if Markiplier decided to engage in some anomalous self-improvement using SCP-914, The Clockworks? Using live test subjects with this machine is always a bit dicey, and he would need to be extremely careful about what setting he used. The very fine setting could produce some really exciting results. Maybe it would improve his eyesight, or give him the ability to work long hours without experiencing creator burnout. Maybe it would give him the ability to fly, or to spontaneously generate a Wi-Fi hotspot no matter where he was, or how little phone signal he had. Yes. Maybe it would make him the greatest gamer in the world. There's really only one reason to find out. Just make sure to hit the right button, or several million people would be very, very sad. Speaking of self-improvement, what would happen if Markiplier got his hands on an anomalous computer program? 
Not one of the dangerous ones, but an educational one intended to help children learn new skills. SCP-5094, Miss J's WizKid Schoolhouse, would be a perfect fit. He'd have to find a way to play it on his computer, but once he did, Markiplier could livestream his experience with the software. It's uncertain how the anomalous effect of SCP-5094 would translate into a massive audience, but it would be amazing to see if thousands of people could learn a new skill at once. It would be potentially life-changing for everyone involved. Speaking of helpful anomalies, Markiplier would greatly benefit from an introduction to SCP-662, the butler's handbell. Running a YouTube channel takes a ton of work, and having an eager supernatural assistant on call 24 hours a day would probably really improve the quality of life for everyone involved. Mr. Deeds would be happy to assist with whatever day-to-day -day tasks might come up, and could even become a beloved background character on the channel. Whether it's bringing Mark a bag of Takis or helping edit video footage, there's very little this helpful British butler can't do. When you get famous and successful, and when you become a public figure online, it seems like everyone out there wants a piece of you. People want money, attention, to ride someone's coattails to fame. But what about an anomaly that quite literally wants a piece of Markiplier? Or any person, really? SCP-082 Ferdinand the Cannibal would love to meet Markiplier, and would love to make Markiplier his meat. He would probably use his habit for lying and spinning elaborate stories to attempt to entice Mark into a dangerous situation. Hello, Markiplier, it's me, your friend Jack Septicai, he would say while very visibly not being who he claims to be. It's time to film a new video challenge. See how long you can stay in the soup pot. Just hop in the pot of boiling water, don't mind me cutting up carrots and onions into it. As long as Mark keeps his wits about him and doesn't fall for the extremely obvious lies, he would likely escape this confrontation without ending up in a YouTuber's stew. Markiplier is somewhat familiar with the layout of the SCP Foundation containment site, thanks to the gameplay of Containment Breach. But what if, after freeing himself from one anomalous nightmare, he stumbled into another one altogether? What if months after his inexplicable teleportation into the containment site, after life was starting to get back to normal, he was in the market for a brand new gaming chair? And what if he decided to prioritize convenience and Scandinavian furniture engineering in his selection process? And what if, on top of all of that, he had a craving for some Swedish meatballs consumed in a public food court? Why all of those factors might just lead him to IKEA. And while there are hundreds of IKEAs around the country, it's not impossible that he might just pick the wrong one and find himself lost inside of SCP-3008. Markiplier is a fairly observant guy, so it likely wouldn't take him long to notice that something is a bit off inside of this particular retail store. There wouldn't be any other shoppers around him, the aisles would go on forever, and the employees inside wouldn't have faces. That last one would probably be the biggest giveaway. Unfortunately, once someone is inside the infinite IKEA, it's pretty unlikely that they will ever leave. He would give it a noble effort to be sure, exploring his surroundings and finding the best places to hide from the IKEA staff when the lights go out. If his phone is fully charged, he might even be the first person to live stream from the depths of this anomalous furniture outlet and spread the word to his fans about the existence of SCP-3008. But sadly, that stream would probably wind up being his last, unless he somehow figured out a way to recreate his YouTube setup inside of his strange new home. If he did though, that would be pretty cool, almost cool enough to make up for the fact that he would never see any of his friends or family ever again. Fortunately for everyone involved, it's highly unlikely that Markiplier will end up interacting with any SCP anomalies without the safe barrier of a computer monitor in between them. But just in case reality ever bends in on itself and worlds begin to collide, hopefully Mark will remember everything he's learned. And to anyone who's ever told you otherwise, see, playing video games can help you in the real world. It might even save your life. Now go check out SCP-963, What Would You Do If You Were Immortal Like Dr. Jack Bright? And the whole story, What If SCP-096 Wore SCP-035? For more utterly bizarre what-ifs.